Well, I think when God made salmon rivers, I think he was thinking about the Avoca because the Avoca has absolutely everything going for it as a salmon river. So what happens is around Christmas week, you normally find that the fish will start looking for areas to lay their eggs. And it's the female salmon that takes the lead. And the pectoral fins on the female salmon are super sensitive. These are the fins that are under the body of the salmon. So the female salmon will start to root about, feeling the pressure as the water goes down through the gravel, looking for a very even throughput of oxygen and a throughput of oxygen that's dissolved in the water. And once she finds a good location then, she'll start to root out a nest, or what we call a red, and she'll use the power of her body to root out this particular red and lay in there the eggs that the male will fertilize, and then she covers those eggs. And about two years after the eggs have been laid in the gravel, they turn into these beautiful little silvery fish. And these fish are extraordinary because they're already making the transition to be sea fish. And as a result of that, they're almost forced out of freshwater. And this time of the year, on a lovely day in April or May, you see these little silverfish jumping. And poets write all sorts of lovely poems about them and people write songs about them. They are incredibly uncomfortable because of the physiological changes that are inside their body. And all they're interested in is making it to sea. And once they get to sea, oh, big sigh of relief. They're in salt water, and then they very quickly head towards the feeding grounds. So once the adult salmon then get back into the harbour, they then have to do exactly what they have done previously as smolts. So they have to make a transition, in this case, from salt water to fresh water. And over the period when they're in the harbour and when they're fresh in the river, they're extraordinarily delicate and sensitive. Even these big, powerful fish, if, if they're handled in the wrong way or if they're in any way uh, damaged, it's amazing how easily killed they can be. But once they've made the transition into fresh water and they've become hardy, they then change colour a little bit, they go much darker and they start to make their way upstream. So the Avonmore and the Avonbeg, they, they flow over very, very hard rocks. They flow over predominantly granite. There's some sandstone, but it's predominantly granite. And as a result of that, the water is quite acidic. You'll often see the brown color that's in the water. And the geology of the catchment absolutely defines the type of food that the salmon and the sea trout as juveniles will find in that particular catchment. So what I'll do is I'll just sample a bit around the weed and sample a little bit on the stones. So that's a beautiful little flat mayfly. He has three little tails spread out there at the end, which is distinctive of a mayfly. Lovely dark back, and that's indicative of a creature that actually will only live where the water is quite clean. So these little creatures are probably the most sensitive creatures to any sort of changes in terms of water quality. So this is a little stonefly. And you can tell that it isn't a mayfly because it has two tails. Uh, the mayfly has three tails. Also, the way it moves is absolutely different. You can see it's a sort of sinuous movement. But in Wicklow, particularly in the upper headwaters, you can get these fantastic uh, big stoneflies. And they can be as big as the head of the spoon. So that's a smaller variety, but it's still very important uh, find because it does indicate, with the flat mayflies, it does indicate just how clean the river is at this point. Normally, the first big flood in October, they will start to move upstream. And from that then, they'll move all the way up to the actual spawning ground, very often very close to where they themselves came from. And they'll forge ahead upstream, they mature as they go, and normally in December, right up to Christmas week, these fish will mature and then they're ready then to lay their eggs. The eggs themselves then stay in the gravel until around the 1st of April. We normally assume the 1st of April to be the birthday of the salmon. So around the 1st of April then these little eggs will hatch out as little fry and the whole cycle then begins again.